Okay, good evening. The Design Review Board public meeting of May 27th, 2010 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on a specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our Design Review Board hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca. US. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the design review board decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. I'm going to go through a roll call. A ro a board member Aliano. Here. Board Member Insua is not present. Board Member Palmer. Palmer. <laughs> here. Stutter here. Uh, board Member Simonian. Not present. And Board Member Yu. Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on May 20th, 2010. There are no items under oral communications. I have no cards. Does anyone, does anyone wish to speak under oral communications? These would be limited to items not part of this agenda. None mentioned. Which brings us to the, the election of a chairman pro tem or chairperson pro tem, given that Chairman Ivan Insua is not able to attend this meeting. Is there a nomination for chairman pro tem? Yes, nominate to you. You, is there a second? I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. At this point, I would like to turn, turn the meeting over to Chairman Pro Tem Yu. Thank you, and welcome to Design Review Board 1, Thursday, May 27th. We have two items on the agenda. Uh, let's see. We'll go to the first one. 1-PDR-2009-075-B. Uh, one Ready to go? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Yu. Good evening, board members. This first project for tonight is located at 1520 Rama Vista Drive. Case number for this project is 1PDR 2009075B. The proposal is to add 820 square feet of living space to the existing 2,670 square feet of house. The existing single family house is located on a on an 18,395 square foot lot with an attached 495 square foot garage. This project was before the board on February 4, 2010 with a previous version of it, at which time the board voted to return it for redesign with 5-0 votes. There were conditions added by the board, which I will go over soon. Subject property is located in the R1, R2 zone. The redesign of the project, as far as site plan is concerned, has been significantly changed due to the elimination of the decks, uh, as well as two of the covered patios have been eliminated from the project. The mass and scale ha has also been reduced because the decks have been eliminated from the project and the overall appearance has changed significantly as well. The conditions that the board added in February 4, 2010 were the following. First, the addition should be revised to better integrate with the, into the overall design of the existing house. Now I would like to quickly show, point out what has been done. <coughs> Several changes have been made to the design of the house, including, including providing the brake on the east elevation, as well as moving some of the addition from here to the front of the house where the chimney was or is at, at, at this point in time and the chimney will be eliminated as a result of that addition. The patio here, this is an existing patio that 
actually, I apologize. This is an existing patio. This was proposed and has been eliminated. And an additional patio has been eliminated, which would be facing, which would be facing, I believe, this one right here. It's on south elevation. So these are the major changes architecturally that have been altered. And condition number two, which was to break up the east elevation that I just mentioned, has been done. Condition number three, better incorporate the rotunda into the design by making it taller. The design of the rotunda hasn't really changed from the previous, and staff believes that it appears to be appropriate for the style. And the proportions are properly designed. Condition number four is to provide window cut sheets. The applicant has provided additional information regarding the windows. Condition number five, redesign the covered patio areas to better in integrate into the overall design of the house. As I mentioned, the patios, covered patios have been eliminated from the design entirely. Six is to provide additional landscaping information, but no additional landscaping is being proposed because the decks have been removed. The existing uh, slope facing Melwood the existing grade will be untouched. Seven uh, is has to do with the deck. In order to study the proposed deck better, provide three-dimensional perspectives. Again, the deck has been removed. Eight and nine also have to do with the deck, but since the deck has been completely eliminated, those conditions pretty much have been met in a way or not. <laughs> or there's no need to, I should say. So the project, the scale of the project has reduced significantly from what we have seen before. That includes that includes the decks, the patios, and removal of some of the addition from the east elevation to the front of the house, and the removal of the chimney. That pretty much wraps up my uh, brief presentation. If you have questions, I'm available. The applicant is also here. Do we have any questions for staff? Um, so the decks are completely gone. Correct. No. Correct. That part of the hill will be as is and will not be touched based on this proposal. Question. Thank you. We have one card for this project. Uh, Pedro Starkisian. Yes. If you could please state your name and address for the record, please. Want to finish? Or? <laughs> we'll give him a second. <laughs> you ready? Good afternoon. My name is Bedros Darchian, 527 Tan Canyon Road, Duarte, California, 91010. Uh, I believe Mr. Gilbert sums it up that the main obstacle they were the deck and the cover uh, patios. Uh, with discussion with my client, we found out that's going to drag, and he's really anxious to do the addition to suit his needs, so we eliminated the deck as well as the two patios. Uh, the rotunda issue, the entry, uh, I submitted many alternatives. I worked on it. I worked with uh, Mr. Geborg and Ms. Uh, Stephanie. Uh, with higher, lower, we saw that this really fit the design and the character the most. And the reason we eliminated the fireplace, since my client moved in the house, the fireplace, you know, it's a masonry fireplace, it's not workable fireplace, and uh, we decided to eliminate uh, uh, that fireplace completely. Uh, other than that, uh, I mean, we complied with all the condition, and I hope this time you consider uh, approving the project. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? For yes, I have oh, a question. Yeah, I do. Are these vents? Okay. Yes, please. With the pointer? You can come up here. That vents here and here, and I'm wondering if these yeah, are Yeah, those are existing. They're, yeah, we're oh, not those changing. Are existing? They're existing. Okay. They have different kinds of vents, yes. Okay. And were you proposing to chase us? The trim is evidently green with the color. It's actually, it's not really a trim. Mainly they're... Uh, the gutters, 
No, the gutters, they're, they're green, so we want to continue everything. Right. Yes. Were you thinking about changing the color of the garage door since it's the only white? I mean, if that's probably they will change it so we can change it. No, we don't have okay. any problem. That's the only questions I have. Thank you. Question. Yep, so when you are extending uh, this, obviously, the rotunda is actually new because you have to move it forward, right? Yes, no, it was there before, yeah, we moved it a little yeah, forward. Yeah, otherwise you won't be able to get that room to be there. So that's right here, okay. So that's a brand new rotunda. That was really the only thing. One thing I had was, any reason why there's three of them like that, or have you considered maybe combining them and making one grand window? You know, the main room. We tried, we worked on that too. The ceiling is only eight feet high, you know, inside. And it's really, it's Could gonna- you bring them closer so it looks more like a I one can. window? Yes, I can. Because it is the grand room. It might be nice to- I can have them, you know, just like that. six inch or a foot apart. Yes, that's not a problem. Yeah, make them read like one, one piece. Okay. You know, maybe these could be. I'm just suggesting. See okay. how no, that's, that's a, we don't have any. Because it's a, it's a major space, and when from the outside it doesn't read like. Okay. I think that's it. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, or? Were you no, done? That's okay. It. Thank you. I don't have any more cards for this project. Is there anyone else to speak on it? Thank you. So we'll just close it up to dis discuss. Would you like to get us started? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, I'm glad that you eliminated the decks because those decks were, were creating a lot of problems. <laughs> um, so I'm relieved. You know, when I saw them in the packet, I said, oh my God, the decks are back. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I think these are the old drawings. Um, but uh, I, so I'm, I'm glad that you did that. And I, I really, I think, I think you've done a nice job trying to work with that other piece in the front. Um, um, you know, this was not working because when you walk along the street, something that big is, is right, right at you. So I think the breaking down the scale a little bit, like you've done here, works really well. You know, I, I guess, what am I? Like? Yeah, I, I guess that's the right approach. I mean, this you want this to be like that and not to reverse. So plus, it tends to deflect towards the rotunda. You know, everything kind of goes through that. Um, so and I, I kind of actually like the fact that you extended the front. Because before it was very deep. When you come in, you had the, the you have that dry, the motor court. It's, it was like a a zone that wasn't really defined. You know, would you put landscaping in, or do you do what? So the fact that you put square footage there, I think, helps. Uh, and you know, enlarging that room, I think, is a good idea. Um, as far as the back, I think you know that's kind of nice. Um, and really, the only question which I've asked is, you know, this. You know, if because that it doesn't have the charm that all of this has, you know, and I wonder if you could combine them. And I don't know if you would even consider even breaking the. I don't know if it makes sense to even break that and just maybe do one big window there, like a big picture window. I mean, I don't think I would have to see that if we agree that that's the way to go, just to sort of create, you know, that's the focus. But then you have a dialogue with with the living room window, which becomes another feature, because. When you're uh, on the street, you're going to see that. I mean, it's right there, right in front of you. Um, so, because I, I think, if I remember correctly, when I was there last, you come in, there's, yeah, and then, and then it starts sloping down here. So actually, the first thing you see when you're on the street right here is that. Um, so that window is really critical, especially when you're coming up. So I just want to discuss that a little bit, that window. Now, the, the door, the garage door, is that a new door? It's existing, you leave it the way. Is it, I can't, is it a wood or is it a f uh, fiberglass? What is it? It's fiberglass. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it might be nice. Hmm? What? I can't. Just have a nod, I guess. <laughs> it's okay. I should have asked that before. But, um, um, and then I guess... Maybe I could ask you, the, the, the railing that's there, that's proposed here, is that new or? I mean, it's Those are existing. Proposed? Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I, c I can support the project and I'd like to maybe discuss further those three windows if we can. Great. Okay. Ready to go. Let's see. Um, 
I was looking, and I may be still confused. I know one of the questions before was trying to duplicate some of the character that was throughout by doing some indentations in the rotunda. These aren't called out in the uh, window schedule, and I don't know if they're windows or they're vents. So that's a question I would still have. And I think now that the project's going to look much better than it did, that it might be really nicer to uh, put another garage door there because it's just a white aluminum door. And the other question we had before was not just the landscaping on the slope. It was uh, the whole front is just dirt. And we had asked to see a landscape plan, and I still don't see that. And the site is still just dirt, and I would like to see something in order to complete the project. But I, I can support the project with minor revisions. Thank you. We'll bring you up after if you have anything to say. You okay with? It? Yeah, these are the integral. Yeah, these are. Yeah, those are good. And those three are windows. They're not just. Yeah, they're glass. windows, right? Because okay. they're it's high ceiling right in that area, right? Um, I too agree with most of the comments. I think that it's an improvement with some of the breaking up, the minor things that were done. Um, I guess one concern that I, I was wondering, and you don't have to answer, just nod your head or something, but in the front bedroom, there's no window here, right? <clears throat> on this side. You might just want to consider putting something in there because th those windows I don't think will meet your exit requirements but that's you can deal with that in building um, but uh, I think all the little things that you did I mean they make a difference it's a better project and um, I guess since we're not considering the, the back portion I think we're I'm okay with it as well yeah. so let me open it up again and do we do we want to talk about these three windows together first what okay that's a good idea because um, I, I agree with you I think we can you know you could combine, combine them and make them taller, almost, you know, I don't want to say floor height, but uh, maybe a few inches off the floor, but that way you get more height and more width. You know, I would say maybe, you know, the ratio should be longer this way and a little bit shorter. Okay. Um, well, maybe in our consideration, we'll just give them sort of a range that they can work in. <coughs> they can decide how they want to treat that. Yeah, I would just say, I'm not going to design it for you, but I'm just catching it from my own. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you did a big window there, you can work with staff. I think you get you get some good direction. But the intent is to to combine those three windows, so it looks like either one big picture picture window or three three windows that are composed, so that it looks like one grand room behind it. And you may not need to break the E. You know, we may be able to do it without that. Stephanie so. wanted to comment. Just a question on that. Um, what I I imagine by your your motioning is that uh, a central window with perhaps an arched top is what you're suggesting. Need there, to break the e that to that may be a, a slight challenge if there's that's a very low ceiling. So w would it also meet your recommendation to simply make the central pane a much larger window and keep its height? In in the same the same height that it you, you is. You could lower the sill though a little bit. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, you can make the central one bigger, lower the sill on all three of them, and then make narrow the other. Right. That that's a very typical yeah. um, treatment for for that style of house. Mediterranean look. You know, okay. It can't be too modern looking. I think we understand what you're yeah, going I, for. Yeah, I'm not worried. Great. But I think generally, you know, you're you're in the right direction. Okay. And I like the okay, case. I like the Integra too. Those are really okay nice. With ones. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, with that suggestion. Okay, let me open it up so. Regarding the landscaping. Uh, name and address again, please. My name is <laughs> Pedro Starchian, 527 Tank Canyon Road, Duarte, California, 91010. Uh, we have an oak tree there, and we cannot disturb you know, under the oak tree. I mean, we like to add some landscaping, you know, maybe lawn and some. But the edge, you know, like whatever we have there, we're probably just maintaining, you know, the drip line of the tree. And well, I've been to the site, and I realize you do have an oak, but I'm talking clear across. When you go in the front, uh, from the entry, yeah, all across the front and down the side, there's nothing and astroturf. So that's actually most of it is pavement. 
you know, all the way to the edge of the building is pavement. Well, anyway, I, I just think we need some to address some of the landscaping. I mean, I can, that's what. I'm and you can address that with staff. We'll with, make that okay. as one of I will do that. Thank you very much. We can take care of that. Okay. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Let's close it up again. Uh, do we have any? I mean, we have a. Let's okay. go over some of the. Yes. Uh, conditions or. Condition was added to make the three windows either combine them or make the center window larger, lower the seal to give that picture window look. And I also heard the consideration of a arched window. Could be Only added. if they can make it work, but it's Only up to staff. We could put that as a consideration right. in lieu of condition, right. number one in this case. And consideration was added to change the garage door to match the house because currently we have white, most likely fiberglass door. Quickly. Did you consider painting that door as an option? Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe we'll make that, that as an option too. Consider painting or changing. Consider painting or changing. Okay, thank you. And that's that's what I have for now. Oh, for some landscape. I would ask for the ask. landscaping. Would you would you rather see any particular type of landscaping or? Well, I think we need some landscaping that complements the house architecture and drought tolerant, mm -hmm. and in the areas where. It can be landscaped. Realize we have oak trees, but drought tolerant. No. Okay. But something that complements. And that put that as a condition as well. Uh, and uh, on the landscaping, there are a number of areas that are noted as um, existing grass or dirt. I think it's dirt slash grass on the plans. Mm -hmm and then other areas that are hardscape. So you're referring to embellishing those areas that are currently either grass or, or just not even having any landscaping, and you want all of that area to be, cut, to be treated with some type of landscape treatment, uh, including drought-tolerant treatment, um, mulch, gravel, a combination thereof. Correct. The whole entire yard should blend well. And, and th that is a code requirement, so we'll, we'll double check that. We understand that it was a condition of approval last time um, and wasn't provided, uh, but we, uh, we accept that you'll rely on us to, uh, to review it. I think we're comfortable with that. Okay. Good. Great. I uh, move for approval with conditions and considerations stated. I'll um, second that. Okay, this is going to be a roll call. Mr. Aliano? Yes. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Uh, Mr. Yu? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Next project. We have 1-PDR-2010-015-8. We ready? <laughs> uh, good evening, Chairman Yu and Board Members. The next item before you is located at 419 Kooten Lane. Uh, the proposal is to construct a first and new second story to an existing one-story house. The total proposed addition is 2,786 square feet. Uh, the existing house is 612 square feet uh, on one level. Also proposed is a facade remodel of the existing Spanish Revival, uh, Spanish Colonial Revival style residence to a con contemporary residence. The existing two car detached garage will be demolished. Uh, the property is zoned R1 off, low area district two, and it is located in the Glen Oaks Canyon neighborhood. The ex existing property was developed in 1925 uh, the lot is 9,700 square feet, and it is irregularly shaped. There are numerous oak trees located on the property. The existing house is situated at the rear of the lot, creating a long and generous front yard area that is, uh, that is um, furthest, therefore creating a, a longer setback from the front property line. This condition is actually inconsistent with the other homes on this street, as these homes are located closer to the street. Uh, the lot is relatively flat, 
at the front. However, it slopes uh, at the rear. It slopes up behind, directly behind the house. As I stated earlier, there are many oak trees, 16 in all. The proposed project will require the removal of three oak trees. An oak tree report was submitted for review and has been approved by the Urban Forestry Division along with the appropriate mitigation measures. Additionally, two oak trees will be required to be planted on the property and will be planted to the satisfaction of the Urban Forestry Division. Uh, as I stated earlier, due to the, site, the existing site planning of the property, the majority of the addition will be located at the front. And the, the, the proposed site planning is also, um, it's, it's, uh, it was also uh, determined by the shape and the location of these oak trees. Uh, as such, there will be a, the, the house and garage will be set at a slight angle as opposed to direct, directly facing the street, as you can see on the site plan. Um, however, the project meets all zoning code requirements. Uh, if you look at the front yard setback, there appears uh, the applicant is proposing to provide new landscaping in this area. But as presented, it appears that it does not meet the minimum required by code, which is 50% of the front yard shall be landscaped with live material. Uh, it, it looks like what the applicant is proposing appears to be consistent with, with the intent of the drought tolerant and the style of the house, but there needs to be more landscape and more variety in terms of landscape material, as well as being drought tolerant. The proposed addition will bring the livable area to 3,398 square feet. 2,486 2, square feet will be on the ground floor, and 912 square feet will be on the second floor. The second floor will mainly just be the master bedroom, bathroom, as well as uh, a closet, a walk-in closet. Uh, as reflected on the elevation drawing, there is variety in the building forms, and the second floor is set back from the first floor. The building height varies between high and low at various locations as well. These features help the building achieve a reduced and sensible mass. However, of the four elevations, the north elevation appears to lack the consistency in its fenestration pattern found on the other elevations. The addition of more windows of various sizes and shape would help resolve this issue. The proposed project is a contemporary design consisting of a flat and simple clean building lines. The overall design is reinforced through the exterior finishes, texture, and colors of the cladding materials. These include cedar wood siding, hand-applied plaster, sanding seam metal roof, and store front window system. Other materials include wood railing and trellis on the second floor. Overall, the design, detailing, and materials are appropriate to the contemporary style and they appear to be of high quality. However, some minor refinements are necessary to make them complement the resident further. For example, for the second floor railing, as you can see from, from the front elevation, it's proposed to be wood. Staff uh, suggest that this railing should appear lighter and the tone of the metal standing roof should be of a darker tone as opposed to the the tone that's reflected on the elevation, and um, the incorporation of more windows on the north elevation as previously stated. Uh, overall, staff believe the applicant uh, was successful in achieving a, a design that, that has a reduced perceived mass, and overall there's consistency all the way around. So uh, staff would recommend approval with condition as stated earlier, and this condition would be that the standing seam metal roof should be of a darker and more subdued tone. Two, the railing for the second floor terrace should be reconsidered as a lighter rail. Three, the posts and beam for the trailer should be lighter in appearance. Four, the north elevation should be revised to, to reconsider the 
fenestration. In the gray, that gray box, right? Yes. And five, the front yard landscape shall be provided with a minimum of 50% landscape and shall consist of drought tolerant and or California friendly landscape materials. A greater variety of planting consisting of a reduced lawn area and a ground cover appropriate to the oak tree should be provided. And with that, I conclude my presentations and if you have any questions, I'm available to answer those questions as well as the applicant and the property owner. Thank you. I have two cards for this project. Uh, the first one, uh, we'll have the designer come up. Is it Gonzalo Herrera? Please state your name and address for the record, please. Are there any other cards for this project? Just two? Is your the second one? Would anyone else like to submit a card? Please fill them out. Yeah, you could right, fill one out. Hi, my name is uh, Gonzalo Herrera, 115 East Foothill Boulevard, Suite 200, Glendora, California. I'm the designer of the project. And in this case, uh, we are trying to do an addition in a com contemporary design on a Spanish, uh, very small Spanish house. So we need to keep the existing house to comply with the condition for planning. So we try to incorporate as much as possible with the new design and working with the, with the use the exterior walls for the existing. And we try to keep as much as possible the native uh, oak trees over there. And uh, <clears throat> basically we, we're using uh, simple materials to make it look clean and simple. With the irregular shape of the property that help us to to work a lot with the forms and different heights and different shapes, and I think this is very good incorporating the design. Basically, it's the the design, and that, that's it. For okay. Do you have any questions? I have one question, and maybe yes. I'm just not looking at it correctly. This is the second-floor roof. Uh, like hip roof. I don't is, see that. that. I'm assuming that would be the south. But it's not a second-floor roof. It's an existing roof, yeah, existing house. A, so what, you, what you're seeing is here, and then it goes behind the wall. This is the second floor. Oh, that's on the first yeah. floor. So what you're seeing here is sort of back, so this actually cuts off here. should be a little line right here. Uh, so this goes through. Okay. Well, actually, it's on purpose uh, continue the parapet wall to to look like it's... Okay, uh, I just wasn't... Are oh, you continuing it? The parapet wall, yeah, the gray one. Because your roof plan doesn't show that. They're continuing in the back, but the elevation doesn't show that. That's yeah, on the back. South. That's, gonna so be that's the, the south elevation. Well, that's correct. See, this parapet here... Yeah, that one, that one. It's here, but the, there should be a line. Yeah, there should be a line right there. Yeah. There should right. be a line right here. Yeah. And actually, Wouldn't this, this should be going back. back. Yeah. Right. That's where I'm confused. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Looks like a reverse. Right. This green should there be. should be a hip. There should be another hip right here. Right, another line here. Okay. Right. We're clear. And then, you know, yeah, it'll, it'll work itself out. Was that it for your questions? That's all the questions I have. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how you, I guess, kind of determined which masses got what finish, how you approached that? Well, we was working with Rathar together. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, we was working with um, very massive volumes mm -hmm. and working and working. We was breaking up to, to make a smaller volumes to, to less the appearance of massive uh, things on the property. Right. So that's why we have uh, more volumes and less less uh, size. So we're trying to balance uh, the, the color and the, the shapes, the heights, uh, because we want to create inside a very spacious uh, rooms. If you see on the floor plan, the bedrooms are really big, so we need to, to 
create a higher ceilings. And uh, that is the way we was uh, designing the house. You don't have any sections? Uh, Project? No, not right now. Then, so these spaces here, are the ceilings going to go as far as you can on all of them? Yeah, because the white, the white volume is the staircase. So that one is a lot higher to incorporate the lighting into the, it's a little red area next to the uh, staircase. So we want to see on the floor plan, in the second floor plan. Yeah, yeah right there. Uh, but um, we represent uh, outside, the thing is our inside. So all the heights is accordingly. It's like on the front elevation, the great element on the second floor is the walking closet. So we don't need that high. So we lower the height to represent exactly the way we want. So the that is the existing the existing roof. Right. So we are keeping the structure, and uh, I think the best way to incorporate in the. Uh, into the in this style, I'm changing the material for the roofing. But do you need to keep all of it to keep your 50 percent, or is there room? We for are keeping close to 70 percent. Okay, so there's room in there where you can change some of that, then, right? Yeah. So there's room in there, so you can change some of these, like this end piece and those kinds of things. Well, we we need to keep the structure, but uh, we can change the material, so Carlos. No, you, you don't have. Oh, well, that, that's up to you. Okay, we'll just. But I like I'll take to. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Your elevation here shows it looks like the garage door is recessed, and the plan does not show that. Uh, it looks like the plan. Well, probably it's a misrepresentation. On Would you have the room? Uh, but I, can, I have room to to recess. Yeah, like a, it's, and it's a good idea. This creates a good shadow line. Yeah, that's pretty exaggerated. <laughs> it's really high. Okay. I think that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Next card that I have is uh, Jonathan Salisbury. Name and address, please. Um, I'm Jonathan Salisbury. From 427 Kooten Lane, Glendale 91206. So you're the neighbor? Yeah, we're, in, okay. we're the neighbor to the north. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so we're, we're supportive of the project uh, in general. Um, just uh, uh, really one thing that came up today, which was that um, the, the discussion about the uh, extra windows on the north elevation, because that's the elevation that faces our property. Mm -hmm. And it, it said that <clears throat> there's no privacy concerns. Well, there weren't any privacy concerns before because there were very few windows on that side. But so I'd be interested to know if, if that's, that's, a, that's a recommendation that's being put forward, that the extra fenestration is put there, then how that's going to impact us. Um, really. My other concern, may, you may not be able to help with at all, which is just during construction, if there could be some kind of temporary barrier between the construction site and us, that would really help because we have a pool and lots of visitors coming in the summer and we anticipate lots of dust and debris and stuff like that. So You're the site that has the, there's like an oak tree between this house and your house on the slope there? You're up slope from we're, there? Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. On the right is your face. Right if you're standing on the street, we're to the right. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. okay, do we have any questions for the neighbor? Um, well, I think the windows will probably be solved by putting maybe high windows, you know, not so people can't look over. Oh, I get it. I see. Yeah. Because that's a closet that that's they have back closet. there. So they could put some high windows. That might actually be nice for that closet to get some lighting in there because um, it's a big, big space. And that will break up the surface on the, on the side. That's one way to prevent people looking into your property. I get it, yeah. What kind of fence is there now? It looks like there's, is there a block fence? There's like a wooden fence. Okay. And then our pool equipment is, is in a, a wooden construction further up. Okay, so it's about six feet high then? Yeah. Like a standard fence, okay. Yeah. 
Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. The next card, the, the last one, is Dolores Cruzman. Name and address, please. Dolores Cusman, 417 Cooten Lane. And I'm the neighbor to the south. Okay. And I've been lucky enough to live at that location with a, almost an empty house next to me all these years. <laughs> and only 600 square feet when there was somebody there. So I was a little surprised when I saw what pa Pablo and Diana are proposing. And I think it's wonderful. But the neighborhood is so Spanish-style, rat-style, and I was surprised to see such a, a modern building. But I can change. I can get used to it. <laughs> uh, my big concern, and it's not really a concern, is the terrace off the bedroom. And the house now is so far forward, and my property is forward. I will lose a lot of privacy. There's just no doubt about it. And I can't imagine they're going to have wild parties up on that second terrace, which looks right into my yard. And if they do, they'll have to invite me. So <laughs> I just thought I'd add that. And then there are three oak trees that uh, I was surprised to see that they, they are going to be able to move. There's one oak tree, which I think, if I read the plans right, is near the front of the property. And in the beginning, I thought that was a good one to get rid of. Should never have been allowed to grow there in the first place. But it did, as they will do. And the way it's situated now, I have a lot more privacy from that yard. And But that will be a work in progress. And I think maybe we can talk about that as as they go forward. But I thought I should be on record to say the one that does affect the privacy, I think we can work out. But I want to go on record. I think it's number two, but I'm not real sure. We can, it's near the front of the property. It's the one in the whale. Is that number two? It is number yeah. two. Now, in the beginning, I really did think that that should go out. But now, I hope it's negotiable. But other than that, I wish them all well. And you do know the canyon is so unique and such a beautiful piece of area. So we want to keep it going nice. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we can't ask her any questions. <laughs> we don't have any questions for her, right? We're okay? Sure, why don't you ask a question? Sure, why don't you come up right now and uh, state your name and address and then fill that one out after. You can fill it out afterwards. Just your name and your address for the record, please. Hi, um, my name is Ken Cuspin. been a resident of Glendale for 53 years. <coughs> address, please. Address. Might be uh, repeating what my mom said, but uh, my father was... We need your address, sir. Just state uh, your address, please. My address is 2831 Montrose Avenue, La Crescenta. Thank you. And um, my father was resident of Glendale for approximately 84 years, and his father was resident of Glendale for probably 20 years prior to that, and we have a long history here. But um, I just have three issues, and um, they, <coughs> two of them involve privacy, and then one of them involved the, uh, I guess, the aesthetics of the building uh, of the house you see here. And I'll... Uh, Leave the, I guess, the most important one for last. The first is that uh, although in the report it says that the house overall fits into um, the rest of the structures in the neighborhood, that if you were to walk up and down the street and look at the homes, they're all <coughs> Spanish style stucco for the most part. Um, it would you would see that uh, it does not conform or fit in really in any way, shape, or form to the rest of the homes in the neighborhood, and so I just want to make that point. Uh, the second point, two points of, of privacy. Um, the first one is I think there's two oak trees that are to be removed. Number two and three, I believe. I, 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 
don't want to waste a lot of time going back through. There's, I think, two, three, and 15 are going to be removed. And two and three border the south side of the lot, which um, have a direct impact of five seat <coughs> to uh, uh, my mother's residence. And um, so that's uh, another issue. But the main uh, issue is the second level. Um, now, the second level is, consists of um, master bedroom, and it's on the north side of the lot. Now, um, on the north side of the lot, we, we would, our house, our residence would be on the south side. On the north side of the lot is the back of the house of that house. So it would have absolutely no impact as far as privacy goes for that house. But coming out the south side is the terrace. And the terrace would, um, coming off the, uh, the um, master bedroom, would have a direct view of the TV room, the kitchen, our living room. <coughs> our backyard, uh, the jacuzzi, and the um, okay. kitchen where we entertain. So it basically would have a full view of the inside and the outside of the house. And so um, what I propose is that they put up uh, about an eight-foot crib wall, and that would block the view of our residence. Um, in the past, uh, there's there was a about a six foot fence it was not an issue because the house was set so far back and um, you know you couldn't see anything but with this terrace it's a quite a large one I forgot what square feet square footage is but it's quite large it directly looks over um, into our our residence and then also you know our whole backyard so um, they have you know the, the new neighbors have all the right in the world to build a nice new home and it, it you know it looks like it's been well designed but we have the same right to have privacy and I think the privacy is very important it's been um, all the homes up there are you know been about the same size and they've all, you know, shared a common <clears throat> amount of privacy. And so that's my, uh, my take on it. I might have missed it, but what is along the property line between your mother's house? Uh, there's a little, just a, a little six-foot uh, wood, wood fence, fence. Okay. and uh, a few trees. And the trees get pruned every year. And although they may look a little um, bushy right now, when they're pruned, it just opens up the whole, the whole view. So I'm, if somebody's up on the terrace, if they're sitting in a chair or, you know, if they have guests over or something, you would just have an open view of not only the whole inside of our home, but the whole outside of the backyard. Because the way the house is laid, our house is laid out, the rooms are on the south side and the entertaining in the kitchen and the TV room and the and, and, and the, um, the jacuzzi and the backyard and our kitchen outside kitchen is all on the on the north side so the privacy is would just be eliminated there would be no privacy. any questions for um, well yeah you say you propose, you said that you want to you suggested putting a wall uh, is a this crib wall, wall of some sort, just to well, what would that down at the property or on the no, second floor? No, up on the terrace. So instead of the railing, you, you change the railing into a well, solid wall. Well, what would railing do? I mean, a railing you well, right through it. People from falling out. <laughs> so that's yeah. That's well, that's for safety purposes, I'm sure, but for privacy issues. You see but right if that were to be changed into a solid wall, that would be enough. Sure. Okay. This is the house that you're talking about, Richard. Right? Yes. Okay. Um, so you have sort of a two-story on this side of it because of the sloping terrain. It's right? not really two-story because that's a garage. So I guess you could call it two-story. I mean, well, the we, there's rooms over the garage. It's a two-story. But um, what do you have on the other side? Do you have a 
patio or anything? Yeah, on the other sign? side, which is which is our north side, and their south side is our patio. They run along the entire. Yeah, it's the patio, the TV room, the kitchen, and the living room is all on the other side. That's the south side, and it has all the bedrooms. I see. And so you have a sort of a patio that runs across on the other side of it all the way. Right, and right, right. How wide would you say your patio is about, or your deck? Well, the deck is probably about. 25 feet, 21 oh, 25 feet. feet coming out. But that's just the deck. But then in front of that is um, a brick terrace, which includes a kitchen and underneath tables. That, no. Uh, see, okay. Oh, now, now from the property space, line, from about. the property line between mm -hmm. the new this uh, the, uh, their house Along and here. our house. Uh -huh. On the other side of the house. See, you're looking on the south side. Right. This is south on side. On the north side. Uh, on the property line, from that point is a very small uh, area where there's some trees that are um, that you know have grown, and a garden, and then the rest is brick, which is for entertaining. There's a kitchen, an outdoor kitchen that's right there, and then further down is a 21 foot um, deck, which has a jacuzzi on it. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other questions for? I think that's it. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak on this project? It's your last chance. That's it. No more after this. <laughs> name and address, and please fill out a card afterwards. Yeah. Well, my name is Pablo Portillo. I live in four one nine Fourteen Lane. Glendale 91 to 06. And like about the privacy, I like we love the privacy also. So uh, I understand their concerns. So regarding um, the wall that he mentioned, I, uh, I talked with Dolores and we were uh, already planning to like we need to put a new fence because the one that is there is really, really old and is falling apart. So, like, we can build something that can, like, work for both of us. And, like, I was looking to build, like, a green wall, it's called. Like, you build something and you put plants on it. So it, it's covered with, like, plants. So it's really nice. And it could work upstairs in the terrace. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, about the trees. Like, we are just going to, like, remove two, not three. So, uh, Which numbers to be? Uh, I'm not. Remember? It, uh, the trees that are proposed to be removed are number 2, 5, and 16. Yeah, the one in the side that? of the garage, like, we are not moving that one. So only two trees? Yes, uh, it's the one in the front, like, the one in the uh, courtyard and the one in the front of the uh, property. You read, read Correct. Uh, according to the Arbor's report, there's a diagram that shows the locations of all the trees. And I've highlighted on this drawing the trees that are proposed to be removed. Tree number two is at the south corner of the project site, which is... Well, that's not shown on ours. Yeah, I don't see yeah. a two anywhere. It's right here. Right. Maybe this will help. This is the, the diagram from, it's not shown there, from the there. Arbor's report. Yeah. So this is five. So our packet doesn't even have this. No. Two, five, and sixteen. Oh. I was wrong because there's one not showing. On <laughs> it's not showing on the. Oh, so they've already taken it out on this one, I guess. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Okay. I think none of us are. I don't think we have the before, that's why. Maybe this is the after. Okay. So are you saying you're only taking two out instead yes. of the three? Yeah. Which one are we... Do we have a conflict on, I guess, or not correct on? Uh, if... Well, uh, the two would be... Definitely looks like the way the building's proposed and cited, it, it would be in conflict with the project. That would have to be removed. Okay. Uh, They're concerned about one that's here. 
Is that the one on the north north corner? Well, south corner. Or oh, south corner. Yes, that's that's number two. And there's also one down at the south street side that's not even shown. Rather, can you put the three trees up there and mark them so we can get it straight? One somewhere here. Okay. And that's number two? That is number two. Okay. This is uh, number 16, it's somewhere here. And then five is back here somewhere. In, front, in the courtyard right now, it's a big one. Okay, so that's five. Mm -hmm, yeah. The other one up there is 16? Yes. Okay. The two, five, and 16, which one are you not taking down? 16. 16, okay. So this one is out, and this one is out, but this one is okay. You're keeping that one. Yeah, it's actually the next one. Uh, oh, this yeah, one? Yeah, that one, yeah. What's this one? That's another one, but we are not concerned about that one. Maybe I'm off the wrong location. <laughs> Maybe 16 is shown on that map. Okay. Yeah. So 16 is okay. Yeah, six, 16 is shown so on these the two are, map. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll just get that on here. Okay. And, All right. um, like the um, trees that we are gonna plant. Like, I, it's actually almost in the same position. Like, I don't have problems with the tree's location, but the way the trunk grows. So in tree, I got confused again. So the tree that is in front of the property, like it grows to the side, like it grows with an inclination. So we are gonna plant a tree, like almost in the same position. Mm -hmm. but, like hopefully right. it will grow. Straight. It's gonna go south, man. <laughs> it's gonna go south. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's okay. Uh, about the windows, like we can work probably um, in the north side. Like we can probably follow follow the same style of the windows that we have in the garage. Like small mm -hmm. windows in higher, in higher. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. And I agree with the uh, proposed conditionings. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather, I mentioned like the railing style and okay. the colors and everything. Thank you. Thank you. No more cards. If you could fill out a card, please. Thank you. We'll close it up to discuss. Start with you. I have a little concern. Uh, this area here, these two windows come right into the wall, and. It just seems a little uncomfortable. I know a portion of this probably wouldn't be seen by anybody, but I'm just wondering if these could be brought out with a little space so it's not right into that corner. Um, I agree with adding some small windows up in there. And as far as this railing area is concerned, uh, it's going to be difficult to do any planting on that side to do the screen, but if they could do a short wall that would help screen that privacy, I think it would be even privacy for both sides since you've got entertaining areas on both sides. And um, my other comment is regarding uh, regarding the landscaping. Uh, there does need to be some more plant material, but they've got a lot of white gravel in here, and I would propose that we don't allow any white gravel. I mean, this house is totally different than the houses in the area. Uh, I think it's a nice design. It does fit well. Uh, and it's going to be set back, but the white gravel would be foreign to anything else in the neighborhood. So I think the landscape plan could be worked to eliminate uh, the gravel. You've got a little bit of lawn space on the north side that's really on a slope. I would take that out. And I would use some other material, plant material, that's more conducive to this style of architecture. You've got a... Uh, shrub that's about 10 feet high and wide across the front and up the front walk, the viburnum, I would change that to another variety that may be smaller. Use some ceanothus in the area, some plant material that goes with the oak trees, maybe some kangaroo paws, some more deer grass. Um, and the new driveway go is going in. I know there's a concrete drive there right now, but I don't know that this driveway is as permeable as the city would allow, especially around the oak trees, that maybe a uh, 
tan brick on sand or some pavers that would go with the color of the house and do it on sand rather than large expanses of concrete. And um, I would almost leave that north side natural because you've got a pretty steep slope there and the plantings aren't really going to make much difference there under the oak trees. I think that's, oh, it talks about clay tile mow strips in the front. And I'm not sure what that means, so maybe we could get that addressed as far as a question. And I think that's, those are my comments. Okay. Thank you. You're up next. <coughs> yeah. Hey. Um, I think you've done a really nice job in trying to fit in this new modern design into um, this very small house, which is in the back of the property. I mean, I, I think you've used uh, the geometry of the existing house in such a way where it's sort of generating this new plan. Um, and the new plan is actually not, uh, in terms of how it relates to the other houses, is not really lining up with anything. So in a sense, you've sort of taken what's there already and just kind of exploded it towards the front, um, which I think, I think, to me, is acceptable. I don't think that I would expect you to take the back, the house that's there right now, and then putting another ha addition to it at an angle to it so that you're lining up. To me, that seems unnatural because this house, the property is already, the, the way you approach the property is already, has already that kind of orientation. Um, and I kind of like the fact that the dry, the, 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 the actual uh, garage doesn't, is not perpendicular to the street, it's slightly at an angle. So th these, these kinds of moves, I think, make the whole site planning very interesting. Um, so I wanted to congratulate you on that. I think you've done a really nice job. Um, and uh, the fact that it's modern, I think, to me, is done very nicely. Um, I know we talk about it context a lot, and I, I think this house, you know, if you look at it in terms of the scale and the material that you use and the, the articulation of the masses, the massing, um, uh, to me, the way you've done that, that's done in a very contextual way because it doesn't, uh, you know, if you build this big box that's modern, it would have been quite different, but you've modulated all these masses and the material that you use that I think to me, that's a, a, a good way of being contextual, just to respect the scale and the, and the um, um, just the refinement of those pieces that relate to some of the other the other houses. Uh, so I, I'm quite fine with with the approach that you took, the modern approach, and the materials are going to be quite nice. You know, you use all this wood, and I think that alone is going to add a lot of character, a lot of quality. To the to the to the design, which would um, again um, uh, make it feel more like it's part of the place. Um, and as far you know, I wouldn't usually comment about the plan too much because you know it's really the exterior. But I think the plan is very interesting. You created you know this little courtyard and in, in, on the side, which is you know between the kitchen and that stair that stairs space, which I think when you come down, that's going to be a really powerful um, uh, feeling to be able to come down those stairs and have those windows looking south uh, into this courtyard. So you have that kind of space, and then the front, which you would expect would have some kind of a courtyard, doesn't really have that. It has large windows that look towards the front. Uh, does it really need to have, I mean, I'm, I don't know if you intend, doesn't look like from the plan that those windows are meant to be anything more than just a picture window. You're not really going out. But certainly, you can always go out from the front door. So that, it's a different approach. It's not a courtyard. You're actually looking into that space rather than trying to make a part of it. So you've created some very interesting things uh, on this site um, that I think are, to me, are quite, quite nice. And um, I wanted to congratulate you on that as well. Um, so generally, I, and I, I looked at your, your roof plan, I tried to go back and forth and understand because one of the questions that Mr. Yu had was how did you determine the material, you know, where do they go? And if you really look at it closely, you've been very consistent in how, you know, the wood is only a certain part of the house, the plaster is only a certain part of the house, and all these pieces are interlocking. For example, you know, the south elevation, uh, uh, the new part, uh, 
the wood uh, cladding that's full height and then when you look at the, at the roof line that, that cladding wraps and then it terminates into that that volume that is the stair so you have nice natural termination and I can understand I think uh, Ms. Palmer had a comment about the window ending the way it does but I can see why you did that because from the stair you want to be able to see that plane uh, and it would be nice to bring that wood in if you're going to do that kind of thing with the window it would be nice to bring the wood inside the space uh, I can't take any questions right now, but maybe later. So, you know, the, from that approach, I'd say the window actually is kind of nice to be able to see out into that plane. So, uh, in sort of wrapping up with that point, is that I think you've you've orchestrated these the, the termination of the materials quite well. Um, I'm a little concerned about the main window of the living room, not because of anything, but but because of the proportion. It almost looks like. A, like a, a garage door opening that you you put windows on it because of the the scale of it. So uh, I'm not suggesting any other way to do it. I, I just it just sort of reads to me like that. So maybe the windows because the windows look very thin. Perhaps they're not going to be that thin. Um, you know maybe the top windows could be awning windows. So you start creating a more a little thicker profile on those windows and then the bottom of it, which is where you want to be able to look out ends up being a little bit more slender uh, uh, and by its nature you know once you create a, a, an awning window you're going to have a sash with a frame which is going to make it thicker than the rest so maybe all that will fall into place because in reality unless these are all fixed windows um, you'll get this and it's, it, to me it looks a little too delicate um, uh, for the for the scale of the of the, of, uh, of the size of the opening you might want to modulate it a little bit um, <clears throat> let's see. I do agree that perhaps there should be some window in the north elevation. And again, I, I like your proposal, kind of mimicking that. Or you could do just one long uh, cut at the very top, just one big window with just maybe three mullions that divide that. That so that it doesn't really. Because I think if you put three windows just like the below, it, there might not be enough uh, hierarchy of these th because you already have them in the stair and you have them down. It just ends up being there's not enough hierarchy of window type. So again, staff could work you, with you on that. So I do agree with that. Uh, the mass that you see from the front, which is the you know if you're looking at the garage, again the garage is skewed anyway, so you'll never read it this way. Uh, <clears throat> but that mass there, it feels like it's floating in the middle of this garage. You kind of want to. You know, visually, it, it doesn't want to end in the middle, but but I guess because it's set back, it's, it's probably not going to be uh, that awkward. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not sure what to do about that. I just wanted to talk about it. Um, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, and I do agree with the roof. I think the 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 metal seam, uh, the standing seam roof, I think should be darker. Maybe just a shade darker than the plaster that you have on the main uh, on the um, I guess this would be the on the west elevation you have a darker plaster maybe the roof could be slightly dark a little darker than that so that it sort of blends doesn't stand out um, I, I like the way you've done the surrounds on the windows of the north of the of that of that stair tower let's call it that for now uh, I'm assuming that's all plaster that gets kind of worked out um, um, so I, I guess now I want to get into some of the main concerns of, of the neighbors I can understand you know you being up on the second floor and looking down into their property so I, there's a simple way to do this if you you know the gentleman suggested putting a wall instead of a railing it, it could actually uh, um, add another dimension to the architecture by doing what the gentleman suggested which is not necessarily putting a rail. If I look at uh, yes. this, is kind of hard to see from there. But let's let's look at this actually. You know, you don't. I don't think you need to put a wall all the way around. But I was thinking, when you look at this elevation, you already have a play of these two. This is a plane that comes up. That's another plane that comes up. And then the window downstairs span that gap from here to there. So I think you could treat this as one plane one plane, same height. So from the balcony, from the terrace, you have a railing, right? That's a solid wall. 
and then you could put a railing in between and you could put a railing there and there so because the house the neighbors are here this is not going to really hurt anything if you put railing there but what they're concerned about is this because when you stand there you're looking right into their house so by doing that and you could even maybe make it slightly hour maybe it could be higher maybe it could be 42 inches instead of 36 uh, and then the railing that are perpendicular are 36, so you get a little height difference, give more privacy, and then it, it feels more like a, a termination of that, of this, of this terrace, rather than trying to see through it, which I think is what they're trying to prevent. So, and when you look at that elevation here, uh, this one, so you could very easily remove that and make this one plane, make this one plane, same height, and then from this plane to that plane, this plane to that plane, you have the windows down below and the railing above. And again, perpendicular to this wall, to that wall on the inside. So I think, you know, if the board has more comments about that, we should probably talk about it. But that's one way that I thought you could sort of take what you suggested another step further and give them, you know, what they need in terms of the, not make, make that deck so enclosed while still giving you the price that you want. Uh, so that uh, another comment I have is this trellis and the house to me is you know it's a modern house and just the way that trellis is treated it has a sort of it doesn't have a modern feeling to me I think because I, when I look at it I look at it and when you see these ends it, to me it feels more like a Spanish revival treatment where you're kind of accentuating it so I was thinking you know you could still do you could still have the trellis but maybe put a fascia around it, maybe create a, a box and maybe these guys, or, or introduce metal there if you need to, you know, and you could span in between, or maybe shallow, or I guess maybe shallow won't give you that much of a shade, but, but again, you could treat that as a box and then maybe treat that differently. Maybe it's, I mean, I guess you could, because that's actually kind of a modern move. You have these sort of dog legs turn. Maybe instead of stopping it there, stop it slightly short, or you have to play with that a little bit, but give it more the, the, the more of a modern language rather than this sort of it's not to me it's not it's not quite there uh, so that then I do agree if you are going to put rail in there I do agree with the comments it should be more it should be less less massive than that you could easily put in you know uh, verticals or either with cables or some other type of material again bringing that modern language into it because that there to me seems kind of fussy because I'm assuming it's all wood, right? It's a wood, yeah, 12, I don't know, cedar wood. You know, the jo you're going to have to do a lot of either screws or hardware. It gets kind of clunky, but you can make it cleaner and less massive. And I think you're trying to kind of complement that, but you, maybe a contrast would actually be better because then you have a nice the separation there between the two. Um, so that, uh, we talked about this, we talked about the roof. Um, the other thing that I, I this is not that important, but if you're going to do this, I'm, and I know why you have this, this is an awning, or some kind of a shade piece, right? How far does it extend? I, 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 actually, I'm not supposed to. Three feet. <laughs> um, I mean, it's there for a reason. I wonder whether it's worth making, because I, I'm assuming that this is where the, where the framing of the floor is. So you want the structure to extend. You know, maybe either make the window bigger or maybe make the portion below that kind of part of the window. Maybe it could be brake metal like the window so that you don't get this very weird sort of zone between that because to me it feels uh, uh, kind of strange to have such a small strip of material there. Um, and I'm not sure what, if that window is really necessary there. Is that a window? Yeah. You know, it would probably look better without it. Um, compositionally. Uh, let's see, did I talk about everything? I think I covered everything. Well, well, last thing is, the rendering is very nice. I mean, it shows it's beautiful, but I'm not quite sure if, if the, this side is going to be really wide siding or whether you're going to alternate the sizes, because I really like the way the dark and the light kind of blend. And when you look at the board, the sample, it looks like you're using small strips. They're going six inch. Okay, so it says here. Okay, I didn't read that. that, that and then you're going to alternate dark to light, right? I mean, that's actually part of the cedar anyways, because you get some dark and some light. So. But I, I do like, I like what I see there. And, um, I think that's it. I don't have any other, uh, any other comments. Do we talk about windows? Do we have any windows cut sheets? It's, it's 
it's on the one? material board. I don't know. That, that's not it. No, that's the other one. Let's see. I paid them. Oh, here, I, okay, it's the... Yeah, so they're, they're not, and the windows have a... They're just white, correct? They're just white. Very good. Okay, I, I'm, I, I can support the, con, the, the project. Thank you. Um, first, I'll start off, I, I think it's a good design. I think you did a good job. Um, the material selection was good. Um, I'm not quite sure about the white yet. It's going to be pretty stark out there. It's going to have a lot of glare coming off of it. Um, but I like the way it contrasts, but you know, I don't know if the neighbors will be so happy with that when the sun hits it, but uh, we can talk about that a little later. Uh, the composition of the shapes, they were done well. You broke it up enough. Uh, you have sort of the hierarchy of the pieces on all elevations. Um, it's just that there's some areas that, that we, you know, have been already mentioned, it just need to be fine-tuned a bit. And that's sort of what happens with a modern building is that the, sort of the not having sort of all the fussy details that are there, you need to make it clean. And you, make, you need to make things sort of line everything up together and have a purpose for each piece that goes on there. And um, I think your selection of things are good. But there are certain areas where they're not lining up quite, and they're being a little inconsistent. I mean, unless you're doing it on purpose to be inconsistent with that piece, but then that needs a little more detailing of it. But uh, uh, I'll just go over a few things, and um, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure you can pick it up and uh, you'll do a good job with that. Um, on the east elevation, sort of the front of the house, um, you know, when you start looking at different heights of windows, doors, garage doors, and things, you know, you want to regulate that and have a reason why they're a certain height and not just pick them as they go. Um, I like this, the brow piece that sticks out, kind of separates it out. Uh, I would like to see this sort of white piece here kind of line up with, with that white piece. So it kind of breaks up so that it becomes the hierarchy of this, this, and then that, you know. Instead of having it the same height, just by changing colors, I don't think it's enough there, especially if it's your entry piece. Uh, take a look at that. Um, the the guardrail that, that kind of wraps around, I think you could do two things with it. Go different, you know, eliminate sort of the, the vertical pieces that are so heavy here. Go with maybe some kind of metal, you know, piece that comes up and then it captures some, some wires that go across so they kind of, you don't see it as much. So you're reading this mass. Or go the opposite and try to treat it exactly the same and then it just becomes sort of this piece as it kind of cantilevers over. But that's, that's up to you. Do something with that. Um, I'm okay with this sort of support piece, but you're right. John is right. This piece sort of has sort of its own language that comes with it. Um, I think adding a fascia piece, I think it's a great idea to sort of capture that and then maybe extend it out sort of the same dimension as you have here. So it becomes sort of a brow piece and treat it the same way as it comes out. Um, you know, the three masses that are coming together, that's a good composition. Uh, Height-wise, I think if you're going to use the whole volume, use it. If not, then, you know, look to maybe reducing it a little bit just so it doesn't have such a large impact. Um, I guess turning the corner this way. I'm not so crazy about this, but I understand it's an existing piece. I think there's enough of it here that it has sort of its own little character and sort of tie back to the existing uh, color. I think we should mute it down it's closer to the, the palette that you have here. It doesn't stand out as much as this because it is going to look like this. It's kind of you know, like a little Pizza Hut in, inside your house or something. So you want to keep that out. Um, you know, I think cutting it back here, this lowering it, I think is going to give it a nice elevational change here. The window here, I think, is going to add, and it's going to be much nicer in the walk-in. Um, either one of these or two, or the long one that, that you were talking about here, and I, and it's not going to impact the neighbor because it's going to be high enough that you know all you're doing is bringing light into it. Um, so as we, as we walk, work our way back, I'd like to see this removed and turned into a parapet. Um, I think, well, here there's enough that it, you know, you get sort of two pieces that are coming together that it has some impact on the, on the house and sort of what it is. On this side of it, it's just a little piece that's sticking out. I think it would be better removed, you know, taking that out and then create like a parapet, the height of this, or perhaps, you know, sort of that white color that you have going here. Um, I think that works well. You know, having the two different thicknesses of the brow, you know, you could work on that too. Maybe pick one piece and do it. And in the same way, if you're going to bring the glass all the way up, do it. If not, you know, keep it tucked under like you have here. Um, yeah, stuff like that, I mean, I don't mind, but you're right. If, if 
there's no purpose to it. Just take it out. Um, so you work the way around. Same thing here. It'll impact what you're doing there, here. So then here, you know, if you were to make this a solid sort of wood piece, then you have sort of this piece reading into that, which might be kind of nice. Then you bring a little more wood to the, to the back portion of the house. Um, regarding the neighbor, uh, I think that making this piece into a 42-inch height uh, is not going to do much for, for the neighbor. And so I think you either keep it at what you need to, it has to be 42 minimum anyways, keep it at 42 or go higher, you know, maybe with the wood. Um, but I don't have any suggestions or recommendation on that, I think. But it would be nice to maybe keep these in the same line as you have them and not come up. I don't know if that's going to create what you want there. Um, let's see what else was there. I think that's about it. I mean, it's well done. Um, but, you know, it's just the little fussy things that kind of need to be worked out to make it a, take it that, to that next level. So, uh, point something out. I think that window that we talked about. The middle one? Yeah, I think that's a bathroom window. Oh, okay. Um, so there's a reason. For yeah, that. but I don't think that the, draw, the, 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 the openings of the side are drawn to scale because one is a slider and one is a window. So I think once you, if you, if you draw that again based on the plan, you're going to get a different composition there because... Oh, that one, the thing will be much thicker than that well, one. Well, this is a door, but this is a window, and judging from the plan, it's much bigger. It's about this big. So now, uh, in a, you know, that one there being a bathroom window is probably going to be an awning, right? You want to ventilate it. Um, so, yeah, you're right. You it's know, like a third bigger. Yeah. 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 That's this window here. Yeah. So it's not as symmetrical then. Right. Right. Um, I mean, the window is to the ground. The door, the door should raise that window really to the front, so you might want to look at that because maybe that's one way to go oh, this little different, you know, that justifies that window. Maybe it's maybe longer, maybe taller. So those are the kinds of things that you can work with staff, I think, but the, the intent is, is there. Um, and another thing to say about it. <laughs> oh, you know, this one. You know, this, 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 this is the mask that I was talking about earlier, you know, um, these connections, I don't know if staff can see, you know, here and there, it just looks like a box that's sitting on the roof, and it m might be nice to re-articulate, maybe, the, maybe there's a, you know, just like you've done in these kinds of situations, like you put these little slivers of windows, you know, maybe this doesn't touch, maybe there's a window right there, even though it's a closet, but it's, you know, it's at the end. It doesn't have to be clear. It could be frosted glass. You know, maybe that that's how you can you can have a line there, make you know glass, and then maybe a parapet. And here is not so troublesome because you know they're both plaster materials. But uh, but once you start that, I mean, you have to do it sort of. Yeah, it becomes a different, different thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the one that I'm having a little trouble. But I think maybe once you put a window up there, maybe that will change. Again, the challenge, I don't understand. Well, it just, right now, it just feels like a box sitting on the roof. Oh, it doesn't okay. have... It's not fully integrated. It's not integrated with everything else. Um, what about like a channel or reveal that kind of separates out the stucco from the wood? I think something should happen here. Okay, so a reveal and um, talked about additional windows. Maybe the window could be... You need to speak up into the microphone, I'm sorry. Exactly. Well, I don't think we can solve that here. I think that's something we have to give you some direction. Of. If he's got he's got these little slivers here, you know, do you do something like that? And I believe they're there, sort of like that. Now you have this and that. And I do agree with lowering that. You know. So there's more refinements that we need to make, but uh, I don't think that, sh that would not stop me from you know, moving the project forward. Okay, let's go over some. Go ahead, Jim. I was just going to add that we talked about earlier. I really like the elevation with the shadow of the garage, and if you could recess that garage just enough to create a shadow line, it gives a little darker wood effect. Mm -hmm. I think it complements that whole space. They could do that. They'll just frame back another piece on the. So. It looks good. 
in that elevation. Yeah, I think that's a good but point. the plans don't show that. But before Mr. Duong reads back, um, I wanted to ask a question about the white. Um, Mr. Yu, you mentioned that you had a concern about the white. Yeah. None of the other board members raised that, so if you can expand on that so we can include it or not. What do you think of the white? It's, uh, I mean, it's pretty white. <laughs> I think the whole project blends well into the, with the oak trees, and if that was just a little off color, mushroom or something, it would... It mushroom. Light mushrooms. But also think about the shadows of the trees on the white. Right. I mean, you're going to get a lot of... But you're also going to get a lot of debris from the oak trees, and that white's going to turn into a dirty... Yeah. Well, <laughs> so we should dirty it for them, huh, before we... What if it's white with a, a slight shade of that darker color in it, you know, sort of... Mushroom. Mushroom. So like a light brown or a pale gray, not a not a warm gray, a similar yeah. quality of gray. The contrast is, is really a lot, I mean, between the plasters. So. And, and then the white, white windows are, everyone's okay with the white. Yeah, I prefer some of those, but I, I'm okay with white. I mean, that's what they want. Okay. Um, staff heard a number of comments. Uh, all of them are generally positive and just needs further refinement for the project. Uh, we heard that the landscaping at the front should be uh, revised, particular, particularly the white gravel should not be used. And uh, plant shallot palette should uh, be consistent with the style of the house, uh, possibly incorporating deer grass, kangaroo, kangaroo paw, cyanotus, and the driveway should be more permeable instead of the large pieces with concrete slab. And landscape to the north side should be left natural. That was, did I hear that correctly? Um, garage door should be recessed further to create additional shadow effect. And okay, we also heard comments about the railings that it uh, should be in a lighter appearance for the terrace, and as well as comments concerning the, the treatment of the trellis itself. It's possibly it would work better with a fascia board around, around the, the edges to give that modern appear, uh, appearance. And again, uh, front window reads like the proportion of a garage door, which is facing the street, consider incorporating awning windows on the top portion and modulate these, this piece further. And um, this was just stated again, the mass of the closet on the second level seems to be floating on top of the garage, so this needs to be addressed, possibly adding uh, windows to the north elevation or uh, or the east elevation facing the street. Did I hear you correctly, Mr. Eliano? Yeah, we're not sure what, you know, they have to study it and then you're gonna have to, the idea is not to make it look like it's something that's just sitting on top. But. Okay, and then um, the roof material for the standing seam metal roof should be a shade darker. And regarding privacy, shade darker than, no, no, not, than, the, than the plaster. Not a shade darker than the existing color. Yeah, not a darker green, but a darker oh, to match. Oh, okay, them. a shade darker than the plaster. Than the dark plaster, yeah. Than the dark plaster. Okay, that's. Or I mean, I don't know how the board feels, but they could even use a galvanized pan. You know, a galvanized. Um, yeah, that would be okay. She, yeah, that way, and then it gets it gets its own patina. You know. Mushroom. Green. Okay, with you. Mushroom. We want to earth. Mushroom and gunmetal—they go together. 
Is that acceptable? Is that a suggestion? Yeah, it could be a, a she uh, galvanized metal. Okay. And then um, you also mentioned about the privacy concern that was raised by the neighbor um, concerning the terrace, the second floor terrace. I wasn't sure what you would like to see, whether a 40 inch high wall, 42 inch high wall would solve the, the issue. Uh, Chairman you also, well, Mr. Aliano stated that the the two pieces that are on the bottom should be carried all the way to the top, the planes, the, the two pla planes. The white and the, when these yes, two planes. Yes, uh -huh, that should be. You can carry Correct, that carry that all the way to the height of the railing. Or a little higher if they or, want. Okay, or a little. So if that's uh, specified as 60 inches, which would be five feet at eye level, um, I was thinking about like 42. I know you were, but there seemed to be some yeah, discussion that, that it it won't it won't uh, it won't actually uh, protect the privacy of the southern neighbor. Uh, in the past, what the board has typically agreed to, and other neighbors that have had the same privacy concerns. Um, you've uh, said a 60 inch or five foot wall would be sufficient because that's generally eye level and you would have to actually, in order to see over a five foot wall, you have to stand at the edge. Someone my height would have to be on tippy toes, so you'd have to really make an effort to, to look over, but as you're actually sitting on the deck or enjoying the deck, uh, it, it, you, you in the neighboring property would not have any sense that there was someone back there. So five feet has generally been the agreed upon uh, dimension. If that's okay with the board, and I'm seeing nods from the concerned members, because uh, we do want to make sure your concerns are addressed. Well, I think that's fine, as long as it doesn't change the proportions drastically. So then the question that I would have is um, the, uh, the, the form, the white form in the center is shown as a different height than the, the gray forms, and that, differentiate, that differentiation should still be carried through. Maybe it should be at least a 12-inch differentiation, so maybe the gray walls are at 6 feet and the white wall is at 5 feet, for example. And the architect who has showed he's clearly skilled in these things will test the proportions of that. Yeah, I think you need to work with them. You know, if, if it doesn't change the proportions drastically, I'm okay with that. I'd like to also give them a, an option to use wood on that to go five feet, carry out the, the siding portion, because I think it's going to mess up the proportion of that. Yeah, it, it'll be a challenge. The proportion will change rather significantly. So if it was a, a wood surface, um, would you recommend that that be set back from the plaster plane rather than in line with it? I think it could be in the back portion of the plaster. It doesn't have to be on its own plane. Okay, so it could it could be a surface that you just set back the width of that wall, which would be about eight inches. But you can come off the back side of the wall and then attach to the front side. Yeah. Okay. But we're only talking about the wall and that elevation, the not going back. Only the south plane. We don't want to close in that whole space. Right. I think we understand that, and I think um, the applicant and the neighbors also understand that that would be sufficient for, for that. Okay. And also, um, there was comment about the, the awning over the sliding door leading to the courtyard on the south elevation. Um, comment was to make it part of the windows. The comment was mainly the, the wood that's between the top of the window and the bottom of the awning. I think those can be our recommendations. I think he'll... Yeah, he'll, it doesn't have to be a requirement. He'll take okay. that into account, I think. I think the intent is to kind of make it really like... Um, and the, the, the metal roof, metal standing seam roof at the... 
the south elevation. On the south elevation, on the right hand side, should be a parapet. No, no, I, I think it's just drawn incorrectly. They, it should follow what's shown on the on the, on the roof plan. I'd like to on eliminate the elevation. The, yeah, roof. Which is on. The roof plan has a correct. Be this piece right here. Right. Which is this which piece? Which is that? Okay, so this whole piece would become a parapet. And no, 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 no. That that whole piece should be like the the, the roof on the plant. No, no. I'd like to see a go. I, I think it's foreign to. He's that. saying take away the. Oh, take this and just, away. And just make it the same. For the dimension oh, okay. Again. I, I thought I thought we were talking about line there. So you're saying bring bring this high. Okay. Yeah, I got so it. So that just goes across yeah, the whole plant. Yeah. So it's not enough there. I don't think. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So that we're on the same page. This piece and this piece, which is shown on the west and south elevation, is actually the same room. So that will be changed to parapet wall. Yeah, to, to, yeah, to, to and, and similar to what's going on here between right, these Right, right, right. Okay. okay, so in terms of height and yeah, color. Yeah, to and, match that. Okay. So that would mean that the wall would continue up, um, but the roof would remain as is behind it. Yeah, whatever it is. Right. I mean, they'll probably have to remove this portion and just carry the parapet across. Um, and they do similar that they do in here and just provide maybe a scupper out here. Drain that slope. Okay. So the majority of the roof itself remains because I think yeah, that's. Yeah, it can stay in the back yeah, part as long as it's hidden. That's important. Yeah. Um, thickness of the brows. Uh, should be kept at the same weight or size. This that could is be a recommendation. Just that would be a recommendation. I think the rest of the stuff is suggestions on just fine tuning it and. Okay, um, Miss Wright, it, did I cover it all yeah, or did I miss? Something? I th I think it was. Um, yeah, do that. Yeah, why not put a parapet on the rest of it? Well, I mean, you know, there's enough there. I don't know if we're gonna to hide all of it, that's why. I was just concentrating on all of it. Okay. So, um, I don't remember whether it was uh, Mr. Yu or Mr. Aliano that kind of pointed out the necessity of these type of refinements for a modern design to, to make it work, because I think that our um, our audience and our applicants might in fact notice the level of scrutiny and detail of the comments uh, that you've made tonight on this project are maybe to a different level than you typically go and I, I think the explanation of that being that it is a, a modern house that has different requirements than say a traditional or a Spanish revival. Um, I just wanted to mention that because it may seem to to people who are watching that um, the contemporary houses might be held to a higher standard than the others and that might be a disincentive. So I, I just wanted to make that clear that that's not your intent uh, what we've heard from the board is a very positive response to this design. The neighbors have responded positively and the comments are very specific and precise to take the design to, uh, to, the, to the next level. It's already a good design. Your comments just make it better. Is that right? Well said. Sounds Thank great. you. <laughs> and also, if I may, I think I may have left one comment. Uh, concerning the west elevation, the configuration of the window door and the tiny windows right, right. in between. They should reflect the plan, because the plan is different than the elevation. Okay, but in terms of its appearance, outward appearance, w is that okay? I think uh, once you, uh, they're drawn right, then it should be fine. Okay. He can make I mean, work. you got to have a window in the bathroom, you just can't leave it. Okay. I mean, maybe, like I said, you can make that window a little bit taller rather than horizontal. Okay, I think that okay. those are all the comments that we yeah. heard. I mean, we trust that the staff will, will follow <laughs> the lead and, and uh, guide the applicant. Okay, do we have a motion on, on this project? Yes. 
I'll move that we approve based on the comments. Second. Okay, this would be roll call. Um, Mr. Eliano? Yes. Ms. Palmer? Yes. And Chairman Yu? Yes. Motion passes 3-0. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Next item on tonight's agenda is approval of the minutes. Uh, because the minutes. Oh, <laughs> Actually, I know. Everyone's ready to leave her. Right? I said, wait, there's not another project. No, but actually, <laughs> only two projects this evening, so. We only have two people, huh? From Correct. We only have Board Member Palmer and Board Member, or Chairman Pro Tem Yu, that were present. Member Aliano was not present at the April 29th meeting. So what I suggest we do in order to have a majority vote on these minutes would be to move it to the next meeting on June the 10th. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, with that said, there are no staff announcements that I'm aware of. Stephanie? No, there are no staff announcements. Is there a motion to adjourn at... Excuse me. Excuse me. We're still having a meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, move for adjournment. 645. All in favor? Aye. Adjourn. Aye.